But in this verse of scripture, verse 13, 21, y'all, you guys are just going to have to hang with me for just a little bit tonight. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Verse 22. And he took not the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Now let's go back to 21. And the Lord went before them in the day with a pillar of, of cloud and led them in the way and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Stop for just a second. I'm going to share with you something that these are two references to the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Hang with me. These are two references of the Holy Spirit. The cloud and the fire are used numerous times to, to say this is about, about the move of the Holy Ghost in somebody's life. I'll give you an example. Uh, Exodus chapter uh, 32 verse, uh, I don't know, 20-something, 24, 25. Moses goes in to the, to the uh, tabernacle of the congregation, maybe verse, I don't know, it's in that area somewhere. Moses goes into the tabernacle of the congregation. And when he walks in, it says that a that a that a, a, a pillar of clouds surrounded him inside of that tabernacle. It was the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, moving on his life to show him and to guide him. For you folks that think that you don't have to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's okay. I'm not saying you do to be saved. I'm not saying you do that to, to whatever. Okay. But I'm saying he guides you Amen. inside you. There's something different. There's so, my God, there ought to be. There's, there, there's something different about somebody who's a baptized in the Holy Ghost Christian. Amen. Or my God, there should be. Amen. Does anybody understand me? Amen. Okay, I'm going to slow down. No. Hear me. There ought to be something different about us, Tommy. Oh, Tommy, sorry. There ought to be something different about us. We should not be like that. We ought to have a little bit of insight because the Holy Ghost dwells inside of me. There ought to be something that clicks inside of me with something ain't right. There ought to be something that's something. Listen, now the Lord went before them by the day in a pillar of cloud and he led them the way. I mean, I'm here to tell you that God is trying to lead us the way. But we are not, we're ignoring the cloud. We're all, in that, in that, is that a rain cloud? I don't know what that is. And we're not following after him. If I'm here to share, to share this with you tonight. Listen, there are some in this church that are going to get left behind because I'm going to follow the cloud and I'm going to follow the fire. And, I'm, and listen, if you don't want to go, then don't. Stay in the wilderness if you like. But I'm going to follow after the cloud. And I'm going to follow after the fire. And I'm going to get led the way. I was listening to a rabbi, a Hebrew rabbi the other day. And I'm not preaching this as fact. I'm preaching this as what he said. So don't to just understand where it came from. And he said the scripture that says that all the, uh, all the Israelites left Egypt. He says the actual interpretation of that is they all left Egypt one fifth. He said one-fifth left Egypt. The others stayed because it was comfortable to stay in something that they knew. I can't preach that because that's not what that says. But I'm going to tell you what he said in the, in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, when you break it down and read it out of Hebrew. Now, whether that's true or false, I'm telling you, I'm not preaching that. I'm just telling you what the rabbi said as he read it. Okay? And so here's me. Hear me. I don't know if you want to go and follow a cloud or you want to follow the pillar of fire. That's completely up to you. But I'm going to follow after the Holy Ghost. I'm going to chase Him. I'm going to have Him lead me and guide me and show me what's right and what's not right. I'm going to have Him going before me. I'm going to have Him show me the way. And you can get lost in the wilderness if you're not looking for the cloud or the fire. The wilderness is real. The hurt, the pain that you feel is real. The deception is real. 
It's all real. But if you got, if you can follow that cloud, and if I can follow that fire, I'm going to get out of this wilderness. Yeah. Acts chapter two, verse one. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, you ought to know this, Pentecostals. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with all one accord in one place. Here in verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and set upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. My God, listen to me. As the fire fell, God began to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Amen. As the fire, the rushing mighty wind came and blew into that place, in that upper room. And then they, they were standing, they were there in one accord, in one place. And the rushing mighty wind filled them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's another reference of the fire of God. The fire of God. We distinguished the fire of God. Wasn't it Elijah that built the, built the altar, poured the water upon it, and the fire of God fell down and licked up the water? It's the fire of God. Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, is the day of Pentecost. This year, it's May. I think I wrote it. May 19th. Pentecost. 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 50 days after Easter. See, Easter season is not over just because we celebrated it last week. Doesn't mean that it's over. Jesus walked around 40 days after he got out of grave. Told him to go to the upper room. 10 days later, the Holy Ghost fell. 120 people in a room for 10 days. And see, we think of the upper room like this on the classroom we got up here. That is not what the upper room was. The upper room was, a, was reserved for wedding feasts. What it was. The, the upper room, if you'll notice, when they go to the upper room, that, that, they're, they, that they're, they have the stuff that they need. Everything's been prepared. The upper room. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost to begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, not as somebody says, tie my bow tie, and you repeat after, my, after me, but as the Spirit began to give them utterance, Amen. as the Spirit began to fall upon them, my God, church, listen to me. Church, we got to understand this thing. You may get left behind if you don't get hold of what the Holy Ghost has. Amen. You may get left in the wilderness. You may be left behind, and you may say, well, that church just doesn't love me. That's a lie of the devil. You chose to stay behind. Praise Jesus. I don't know about you, but I feel like preaching. Hallelujah. I don't know if you feel like listening, but I feel like preaching this evening. Hear me. You know the, you know the story of the leper that cried out to Jesus. Cried out to him. Have mercy. Have mercy. In the book of Luke, you can go to the book of Luke and you can see what Jesus, said, what Jesus did time after time after time after time. In verse, in chapter 5, in verse, uh, oh, I think it's 13. No, 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 I lied. Verse 12. And it came to pass when there's a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me, thou canst make me clean. Now, has anybody ever done any study about leprosy? I know a few of you guys. Very painful disease. As your members of your body begin to fall off and we get to be eaten away by that, that dreadful disease. And many people, they had no hands at all, really, just clubs, just their hand with no fingers. Their feet, their toes had fallen off, and they, the best that they could do was just push them to the side and say, let's keep the sick over here so nobody else gets sick. 
Let's keep them over here. Let's just let's compartmentalize everybody. Let's let's just let's say let's take the sick and put them over there. Let's take the lame and put them over there. Let, let's take the sinner and put them over here. And then we'll just do our thing over here. We got all everybody else separate. We got them all separated, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. But the but leprosy is a very painful disease. And, and this young man right here, I don't know how young he was or old he was. And it came to pass that when a, 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 he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Not a little white patch on his hand. Not a little spot on his eye. Full of leprosy. That tells me, Brother Dean, that his nose maybe had been gone and his fingers were gone and his toes were gone and he was maybe an ear was missing. I, I don't know. But I know all that I know is that the Bible says he was full of of leprosy and he had to have been in tremendous pain he had to be in pain and when Jesus listen the church couldn't do anything for him but sit in with a bunch of other lepers and make him cry I'm unclean I'm unclean I'm unclean and if they didn't they rebuked him and took care of him but I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. But when Jesus came to a certain city, a man full of leprosy fell on his face. And he said, if thou will, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And he fell on his face before Jesus. And he said, Jesus, I don't care what kind of pain I'm in. I've got to get to you because of who you are. I've got to get to him because of who he is. Not for what he can do for me, but because of who he is. You'll see what he said. He fell on his face before him and worshipped him before he ever did anything for him. Before he'd ever laid a hand on him, before he'd ever said a prayer, before he'd ever blessed him and told him, Thou, I will be thou clean. That's in the next verse. I will be thou clean. Before he ever spoke a word to the leper, the leper fell on his face before him and said, Oh, God, if you will, make me clean. Fell on his face before God. The Son of God, however you want to say it. The Christ <clears throat> fell on his face and went through the pain to get there. He went through the pain to finally get on his face before God and, and say, I don't even care if it hurts. I've got to do what he's coming. I've got to praise him because of who he is, not because of what he's done, because he hadn't done anything for me yet. But he but that makes sense to anybody. He hadn't done anything for him yet, but he was just praising him for who he was because he believed he could do something for him if he could get to him. Amen. I don't know how it is in the church anymore. I just know it is in my life and in my word and in my life and my wife and my church and my family. That's how I know it is. And I just have to believe that we just have to get to him. If I can get to him. Amen. Well, not where you're at this morning, I don't know. If I can speak a word to him and he hears me and he heals me from the inside out, from my spirit to my flesh, heal me. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, heal me. Take away the scars. Take away the pain. Take away the hurt from every aspect of my life. If I can get to him, he can do those things. But the problem is, getting to him hurts sometimes. Amen. The problem is, we weigh in the balance. Is the pain worth getting to Jesus? Luke chapter 8 
verse 43. Hallelujah. I'll wait till you get there. Ah, oh, dear God. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of it. He came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stands. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When he, and when all denied Peter, and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus says, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And when they and then when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared unto him before the people what, what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And, she, and he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. You know the story. You've heard the story. You've heard the story preached a million and six times. You know the story about how the woman with the issue of blood had to press through the crowd to get to Jesus. You know how the woman with the issue of blood had spent all of her living and all the and all they, all they could do for her was give her an ostrich egg to hang around her neck or give her some kind of poultice or, or give her some kind of herbs or give her some kind of something to eat give her some kind of whatever to do what they could do and they couldn't do anything for her you know the story of how she had to fight through the crowd and though she was unclean she said it's worth it to me to go touch somebody and not tell them I'm unclean amen oh. She fought. She had an issue of blood for 12 years and the blood continually flowed out of her body. No, no doubt she was anemic. No doubt. They didn't have blood transfusions then. They didn't have pills with iron you could take to make yourself feel better. They had nothing. And they, they, I'm sure they bled her to make her, make her blood stop. I'm sure they did their whatever they normally did at that time. And, they, and she said, I'm, I'm weak, I'm sick, and I'm afflicted. But I'm going to get to him. What about her and the symptoms that she had? Church, yes. we have got to get to him regardless of the pain it takes to get there. See, the pain I'm talking about is normally self-inflicted pain, but sometimes it's inflicted by somebody else, and we have to go to them, and we have to make things right, and we have to say, I'm going to have to deal with this because I'm going to get to him, and you're standing in my way. <laughs> See, I I'm going to get to him, but you're in my way. And I've got to fight through this crowd. I've got to fight through this crowd. I've got to fight through. I've got to get through it. I'm going to, I'm going to take my life and I'm going to give it to you, Father. But I'm going to get to him first. And, and, he, and, he, and he said, daughter. I admit I lost my page. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. But I love this part of the story. She touched the very edge of his garment. And I love Jesus' response. Somebody touched me. See, we sing that old song, He Touched Me. Oh, He Touched Me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Now I know. He touched me and made me whole. We sing that old song. But you know, you can sing it and not know anything about it. You can sing it and not have never been touched. You can sing it and never touched him. You can sing it and never know what I'm talking about today. You can sing it. Listen, I know there's some of y'all looking at me like, I don't know why he's all emotional about it. I don't know why he's all excited. I don't know why he's yelling at me. Uh, it's because I'm trying to get you across, I'm trying to get a point across to you that there's something out there greater than the misery you're wallowing in right now. There's something out there greater than just sitting around with a religious experience with Jesus. There's 
something out there greater than just a, uh, without, not having any joy, not having any whatever. There's something out there that's greater. And if I can get you stirred up a little bit, maybe you'll go out and find it. Maybe you go out and find it. I know I'm off my subject. My subject was about the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud and talking about Jesus and the Holy Ghost. But hear me just a minute. Hear me just a minute. He is still greater than the greatest. <laughs> Remember that old song? He's still greater than the greatest. Higher than the highest, greater than the great. No one can ever take his crown away. <laughs> He's an all. Time, undefeated. Something, something. Champion of love. I can't remember the words. He's the all-time undefeated. Champion of love. He's never been defeated. He's never, listen, he's never backed down from a fight. He's never backed down from a problem. He's never turned, his, turned your back and said, that's too hard for me. I can't do that. I can't help you go see Luke. He's never done that. He, he's never ever in his life said, I'll never touch you again. I, he said, I, he's always said, listen, I love it. Go back to my first uh, Luke, uh, where he's talking about the leper. I can't remember where I was at. Luke something else. We're talking about the leper. Go back to my first. Five. Luke 5 and something other. 5 and what? 5 and 11. How many? Mm -hmm. Nope. 5 and 12. 12, sorry. We're close. 5 and 12. It came to pass when a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Verse 13. And he put forth his hand and he touched him, saying, Can't. It's too hard. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. You're full of leprosy. I, now, if you just have a little touch of leprosy, I can handle it, but you're full of leprosy. I, no, he said, I will. I will. I will. Be thou clean. And, and it said, uh, through, through the medical system and through all the tests, and no, it said immediately. Immediately the leprosy departed from him. Not, not in a little bit. Not when it felt like it was the right time, but immediately the leprosy departed from him. Is anybody in this house with me today? Does anybody understand what I'm trying to get across? I know I'm doing a bad job this evening, but I'm trying to tell you this. That we have got to understand this. That, that immediately the leprosy departed from him, and immediately he was healed. He was healed. Immediately he was right in the right standing with God. Go verse, uh, go verse 14 with, with me, please. And he charged him what? To tell no man. But go show himself to the priests and offer for the cleansing according to Moses' command for the testimony unto them. Don't tell nobody. I'm going to do this for you, but don't you tell nobody. And they never let the toll. Well, if it was your leprosy, you'd have told too. I'd have been screaming like a woman all the way to the priest. I ain't gonna lie. I'd have been screaming like a woman all the way to the priest, screaming as loud as I could scream. He touched me. 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 He did it. He said I, he said he would, and he did. He made me he made me whole completely immediately. See, listen, listen, we we've we've gotten so far away from God can just take care of anything. We feel like God can make us feel better. But healing now, that's too hard. I remember a time. I have to tell you now the time. I remember a time. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. When men and women would have problems in their lives, and they would come to this altar. These altars have been here as long as I've been here. They've been here a long time. And there's a lot of tears that have been shed on this altar, and that went alike. There's a lot of marriages that have been healed on this altar and that one alike. There's a lot of healings that have taken place on that altar and that one alike. There's a lot of things in people's lives that have been changed on that altar and that one alike. Because we believed. 
that I can give my heart to God. I can, I can go to God with anything and God will take care of it and He'll heal me instantly. And nobody has to counsel it out of me. Nobody has to talk with, talk to me and convince me that I'm saved. Nobody has to tell me. Nobody has to tell me I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I know it. Nobody has to. Listen, I've seen marriages put back together right there on that altar. And the man and the woman who were fixing to get divorced, I'm not going to tell you who they were because they're in business. But I've seen them right there on that altar and crying out to God. And they get up and they hug each other and they love each other because God did it in an instant when no man could ever do it. They were headed for divorce. God healed them. They're still married to this day. Don't you tell me God can't do it. And instantly and immediately God can do it. But we don't have to, but we have to get to Him not because of what He's done but because of who He is. I got one more little thing here. I'm doing a wonderful job. Isaac's out cold. That's pretty sad when it's a quiet and you can hear kids snoring. That's pretty sad. <laughs> the peace of God. Thanks, you, brother. That makes me feel better. All right, here we go. The parable of the Good Samaritan. You guys know that. Chapter 10, verse 30 of the book of Luke. The Bible says, A man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and there fell among thieves. And they beat him, and they robbed him, and left him half dead. They left him naked, wounded, and left him half dead. Left him for death. You know the story. The Levi walks on the other side. The priest walks on the other side. They were bothered with this naked, wounded man. After all, they were on their way to do something else. And if they touched him, they'd be unclean. They'd go through all the whole process. So after all, we have to just leave. We left him in this condition. We found him. Maybe he'll just die and we won't have to worry about it. And it said that... It said that... Uh, a Samaritan came by. The, the, the Samaritan saw him, had compassion on him, and he put him on his own beast, and he took him to the inn. And, and when he took him to the inn, he, he, he used, uh, I'm sorry, before that he put oil and, and wine, and, and he bound, bound the wounds, and he put him on his own beast, and he took him to the inn, and he paid for his stay, and said, when I come back, if it's more than this, I'll repay even that and greater. You know the story. The story is simply this, that Jesus comes and binds our wounds, that Jesus comes and carried our burden, if you will, and took us to a safe place. Jesus paid our penalty. Jesus paid for our well-being. And he said, when I come back, I'll repay. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I do know this. A God like that is somebody I'm, well, I'm willing to follow after. A God like that is somebody I'm willing to be with. A God like that is somebody I'm willing to chase after. I promise you I was going to talk to you about the, the fire and the, and, the, and the cloud. Here's the fire and here's the cloud. I, I promise you that we are going to chase after. I'm going to chase after that fire. And I'm going to chase after that cloud. You can come along if you will. If you don't want to, that's fine and dandy as well. But I'm going to chase after him. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow where he leads me. And I'm going to do what he asks me to do to the best of my ability. I'm not going to say I'm always going to be perfect. But I'm going to do the best I can with what God gave me to be with. And I'm going to tell you this. Listen, I'm going to, I want you to understand something. That we as a church must follow after the Holy Ghost. We must seek him. We must seek after him. We must chase after him. Amen. Well, you're just leaving Jesus out of it. No, I'm not, baby, because if you know anything about the Holy Ghost, what happens is this. He does not speak of himself, but he speaks of the one who sent him. Amen. He speaks of the one who sent him. He testifies of the one who sent him. He said, when he, when he said, I was ascending into heaven, he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send another. We all know the word another. It, that, the translation means one just like me, but a different form. 
I'm going to send myself back a different way than I'm leaving here. But I'm going to send myself. And I'm not only going to dwell with you, I'm going to dwell in you. My God, church, listen to me. It's time for us to follow after the Holy Ghost and, and to seek after Him. If you're in this place tonight and you don't know anything about this Holy Ghost I'm talking about, Holy Ghost, what is that? You need to find out what that is, what the baptism of the Holy Ghost is really all about. Amen. It's not about tongues. That's an evidence. Initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is speaking in other tongues. That I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost so I could speak in tongues. I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost so I could have goosebumps. I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost so I could buck and kick. I didn't get I didn't, I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost so I could dance. I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost so I, for any of those things. The Bible says that I can be all I will receive power to be witnesses of Him, both in Jerusalem and Judea and all around and all all, all the rest. Whatever. Samaria, I think it is. Or, and, then, and all of Samaria. It's like a bomb going off. There's an impact. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is an impact point. And from that impact point, there's, there's shock waves. And you're supposed to be a shock wave of God. And we're supposed to go out there in full force and do what He asks us to do. I'm chasing Him. I'm going to follow after Him. I'm only 44 years old. I've got a long ways to go yet, but I'm still trying to find him. I'm only 44 years old, but I, I may not be as young as I used to be, but I'm not as old as some. Uh -huh. I'm not as young as I used to be, but I'm not old and decrepit yet either. I'm not walking around like I'm, I'm not limping nor am I pimping. I'm just telling you that here's the deal. I want you to understand something. I'm going to chase after him. You know what I'm saying. Chasing after him. God has given me health and God has given me good health and I thank God for it. Amen. Every day I get up, I don't hurt, I don't, I don't do, I, I don't, I, I, just, I don't. There, there are times, I, I, Jason will testify that he does what I do, but he deals with pop because he's crazy. But anyway, um, there are times that your body hurts from doing it. But you know, your body's going to hurt from doing anything. You're repetitive enough. Brother Buster, I, I worked at Wrangler for 10 years. I know what the Wrangler thing's all about. I know what it's like to do repetitive motion and pick up 60 ply of denim and put them in a bucket, not a bucket, but a box. I know what it's like to pick it up 60 ply at a time, day after day after day. I know what it is to have men that I worked with have their elbows operated on, their wrists operated on, their hands operated on, their shoulders operated on because they are broken down from doing the very exact same thing that I was, I was doing. But God has blessed me. My knees don't hurt. My legs don't hurt. My arms don't hurt. My shoulders don't hurt. My wrists don't hurt. My hands don't hurt. Nothing. God has blessed me with good health. And, I, and he said, well, you shouldn't say that. That's what here. Shut up. God is still my source. Amen. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm just telling you what God has blessed me with. And so with a healthy body and a healthy mind and a healthy spirit, I'm going to chase him. I'm going to find him. And I'm going to run after him as hard as I can run. And now you can be here if you want to be and be mad and be glad or be sad, whatever you want to be. But I'm going to chase after him. Amen. The strongholds that have been in this church are going away. Amen. Or I'm going to die trying. One of the two. Strongholds are going away. Amen. And they come not just from the people that are here, but they've been here a long time. Amen. And it's going away. God did not put me here because I'm good looking. No, I am. God is. Thank you, dear. Give one amen. That's good. Thank you. God put me here for a purpose. And I'm just stupid enough to stay and fight and fight and fight against the enemy. Because I love you that much. And I'm going to pray and I'm going to seek God. I'm going to love you and I'm going to drag you. I'm going to, if you have to drag you, kick in the screen. I'm going to drag you, kick in the screen. Amen. We're going to follow after him. Amen. If I have to drag you mad at me, we're going to drag you mad at me. I just set up this tip. Well, take it down. We're going. <laughs> I'm here. I, I've been here all this time. And now no one, nobody cares about No one loves me. Yes, they do. I'm going to take you dragging and screaming and drag you. You can't make me go. You're right, but I'm going to try. God did not place me here for no reason. 
There's a reason, church, that there's only been four of us pastors in this church since 1959. There's a reason. You don't find that anywhere very much. Unless the building is named after the pastor. True. Unless the church is named Nance Chapel. It's hard to find churches that have had four pastors in 50 years. Hard to find. There's a reason that you're here. There's a reason that God is calling you back. It's not because. <laughs> no, I just leave it there. There's a reason. I'm finding out, Brother Mike, some of the battles my pastors before me have fought. And the reason their hair turned white. <laughs> And the disposition got grumpier. <laughs> I'm finding out why. You guys aren't bad people. I'm not saying that at all. But the devil, the attack of the devil is real. You know, Brother Owens, the pastor that comes to the Pentecostal Church of God, he puts it this way. He says, ah, oh, it won't take them long without chew the sweet out of him and throw him away. <laughs> so he's talking about somebody else, not me. Talking about you and chewing up like I mean I chew gum and it doesn't yes. taste yeah now now gum tastes sweet for like two minutes then you have to throw it away remember those that big old gum balls you used to get and they made you chew on the thing for a week <laughs> now you get a little bit of gum balls and you chew on them and they're like <laughs> we get them at Walmart all the time they break them <laughs> accidentally and they break them and, and they have them sitting out there and I get a handful of gum balls and I'm like that's just nasty. Hear me. Please hear me. That pillar of fire showed them in the night, in the dark time, in the darkest hours. He was the light that showed them the light. Yes. That pillar of cloud by day, in the heat of the wilderness, in the heat of the desert. He not only showed them the way, but he protected them from the heat and showed them the way to go. The guiding hand of God not only protects, but also shows. You with me? The fire of God not only kept them warm in the wintertime, not in the wilderness, sorry. The, the fire of God not only kept them warm at the night time in the wilderness, because you know if you've ever been in the desert, it gets cold in the desert at night. But he kept them warm and also protected them and kept the enemy of God away from, uh, away from them and showed them the direction they were supposed to be going and also kept away the, the enemies of man, the wolves and the things of that nature that would come and attack them because of the fire kept them safe. See, don't be scared to follow him because the hand of God will protect you from the sun and protect you from the heat, protect you from the thing that would cause you to wither and fall and by the wayside. He would also protect you at night and keep you, the, the, the things that would keep you paralyzed with fear and lights the way. So don't you be afraid of following after him. But Brother Jeff, we've never done that. Point. But Brother Jeff, we've never been this way. That's the point. I don't know what to do. Good. Let God show you what to do one time. I've never done this before. Good. It's time to let God that is it's time to get out of our little comfort zones and our little comfort areas and let God show us what to do. Let God lead us. Yes. See, church has almost got to the point that we can do it without God. Well, church, not church, but church. Yeah. We have the best musicians in the world now playing in our churches. 
What, what do we need the anointing for? We have the best musicians. Not, not that we don't need them. Thank God they're there. I, I thank God that, that, that men of God have stepped up and become anointed musicians of God. I thank God for the, for the music. And, the, and the, I thank God for it. Hear me. But we have preachers that are motivational speakers that never break open the Word of God and say, if you do this, you're going to hell. They'll motivate you to do the right thing and try to poke you that way, but I, you know, I'm just trying to say the Bible says if we do that, we go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want you guys to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell. There's people that, you know, that you, that you don't get along with and surely you don't want them to go to hell. I wish God would give us all a glimpse of it. Just so we could see where we wish you would Hear me, church. This is the last thing I'm going to say. I'll quit. There are times that God wakes me up. There are times that God wakes me up. And this is the first thought that hits my mind. What about the lost souls? I pray for you guys all the time. And God will wake me up. And the first thing that hits my brain is what about the lost souls? Brother Jeff, you always talk about lost souls. What's so to Jesus? Amen. Jesus always talked about the lost. When are the lost? Go with the lost. Go, 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 go get them. Bring them in. Bring it in to Jesus. Go get them. I want to be the man of God that I can be that takes this church further than it's ever gone. I want this church to be the biggest it's ever been and the best it's ever been and the further than it's ever gone. Not so somebody can say, oh, did you see what Jeff Nays did? I could care less. I want them, I want, the more we have, the more we can do, and the more we can do, the more we can reach. It's a simple equation to me. Simple equation. But you know the answer, the more you have. Was it the show like God said? The higher level, bigger level. That's what he said. I love Brother Sherlock. I wish I could get him to come. When you see the size of the time, come in the back. See, lift up the light. For your redemption, bro. <laughs> Stand your feet, I'll beat you up and after that. As I told you this morning, as I told you this morning, Jesus is coming. <coughs> My God, church, we've got to be ready. How many remember what my greatest fear is? How many remember what my greatest fear is? Can I remember? I preached it this morning. I said this is my greatest fear. Does anybody remember what I said? My greatest fear is that I have a church full of people who think they're saved and they're deceived. I didn't say you were. I said that's my greatest fear. They think they have a relationship with the Lord. with God, but are stuck in lying, cheating, lust, and all the things you want to think about or don't want to think about. I don't want you to be lost. I don't want to stand before God and say, God, I, I preached what I thought that I would, needed to preach, what you would lay on my heart, and evidently I didn't do a good enough job. 
I don't want to stand before God and say, and have him ask me, how come 90% of my church wasn't here? I don't want to say that. I don't want to have to deal with that. I know that I asked you this morning to do that, and then we talked about choosing sides today. And I want you to seek after Him because of Him. Don't seek after the hand of God. Seek after God. Don't seek after the blessing of God. Seek after God. The blessing comes with God. To me, it's a very simple equation. If I get Him, I get all the benefits of Him. That, that's, that's easy for me. I'm seeking Him. I'm seeking after Him. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your son. I thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for me. I thank you for whoever wrote the song, The Power of the Cross, as it ministers to my spirit. It reminds me that the power of the cross is in the blood of Christ. For was it had not been for the blood of Christ, I would still yet be lost in my sin. Still be yet on my way to the devil's hell. Father, I thank you that it's the power of the cross is in the blood of Christ and I'm able to be on the winning side of this thing and not on the losing. I thank you that as, as Hosea, you came and you chose me. As I was unfaithful, then you still chose me. You still chose me. You paid a price nobody else was willing to pay. You chose me, brought me home, cleaned me up, and made me your bride still. Though I cheated and lied and manipulated you, you still were my bride, my groom, and I'm still, the church is still your bride. I choose you, God. I choose you, Lord. I choose to be on your side. Help me to follow after you. Help me to follow. Help this church to follow after you. God, lead us by the Holy Ghost. Lead us by the fire and the cloud. Lead us and show us how to go and where to go and what to do. When it's time to move, show us it's time to move. When it's time to stay, show us it's time to stay. God, let the protecting hand of the fire be there. God, let the heavy hand of the, of the cloud be there. Let us not wither. Let us not freeze and be paralyzed by fear. But let us go forward with you.